the experimental East Nuclear Fusion Reactor in China was able to maintain a plasma temperature of 70 million degrees Celsius for a stunning 17 minutes. This is an absolute world record and remarkable in many ways. The previous world record set by South Korean researchers has not only been surpassed by several times, but most impressively, the Chinese researchers are actually delivering on their nuclear fusion promise. The goal was to maintain a nuclear fusion reaction with a constant operating temperature for a full 1,000 seconds by the end of 2021. And it worked out totally unimaginable. We're used to the fact that nuclear fusion will finally be suitable for the masses in just 30 years. From 1950 until now, we have seen nothing of it. Even now, in 2022, some researchers estimate it'll still take 30 years. Anshel Ibarra Sanchez, a research professor in nuclear fusion technology at the Spain National Fusion Laboratory, goes even further in assuming that the European Union's first fully operational reactors will not be ready until 2070. So it is particularly exciting that the Chinese researchers at the Institute for Plasma Physics at the Chinese Academy of Sciences have now set themselves their next goal of maintaining nuclear fusion at 1 million degrees Celsius for a whole week. For the market maturity, this is more than just a breakthrough. What does the current world record really mean for fusion energy? And why could a nuclear fusion reactor be ready in just three years? Welcome to the Futurist. Smash that subscribe button to not miss out on any future technology updates. Especially in current times, we are increasingly looking for alternative climate-neutral energy generation methods that do not plunge us into geopolitical dependencies. Baseload capability is the key word here. Solar and wind power deliver decent peak or mid-load with high efficiencies. But unfortunately, these technologies are weather and time dependent. Nuclear fusion is therefore repeatedly referred to as the beacon of hope or as the energy source of the future. Although that doesn't necessarily have to be entirely true. Because many people have already lost faith in this technology and are against this designation. Instead of the planned 5 billion US dollars, more than $20 billion are now flowing into the ITER project alone. And this even without a functioning reactor being ready for the market in the foreseeable future. Well, that's not 100% true either. If everything goes according to plan, it will start its fully functional work in 2025. According to plan, the first plasma in the ITER reactor will be generated in December 2025. Fusion, ignition, and maintaining the nuclear fusion process will follow along. ITER could supply more than 500 megawatts of energy, which would generate electricity via steam turbines for around 200,000 households. More exciting is the world record of the Chinese researchers at the nuclear fusion reactor East, but also at the jet reactor, precisely because the work is to be understood as some kind of proof of concept. The current records are strong indicators that the nuclear fusion at ITER can really work. China is also part of the ITER research program and is working on setting up the system. One of the 330-ton electromagnetic coils, named PF6, is manufactured and supplied by China. Chinese experts are involved in assembling the construct as well. The fact that so many records are currently possible, both in terms of energy yield at the Nuclear Fusion Lab in Great Britain and also maintaining the plasma for a longer period of time at the East Reactor, proves that nuclear fusion will most likely be ready for the market way before 2060. But what good does this technology do for us if we're not able to build those reactors at scale and fast enough? In other words, even if ITER were fully functional today, we would have to spend several years to decades and billions of dollars in investments before we could set up new marketable reactors. Is nuclear fusion worthwhile as an energy production method at all? Well, other energy sources such as geothermal energy is of course also baseload capable. Earth's inner core would provide energy for the entire world for 20 million years. With a new drilling technique which was discovered by fusion scientists of MIT, it is possible now to dig deeper into the Earth than ever before, but we investigated that in another video. According to the AS System Report, nuclear fusion is generally classified as uncompetitive. 
The prices per megawatt hour are estimated at $71 to $83, which is way more expensive than solar and wind power, and that is still a very optimistic outlook, as there is currently no electricity output of nuclear fusion reactors. Nuclear fusion could pay off. However, it is questionable to what extent we can rely on this forecast. It is currently simply unpredictable how nuclear fusion will progress. There are many other energy sources we could consider improving. Nuclear fission reactors nowadays rely on technologies of the last century. Why don't we put our resources in a proven method and improve those instead? Thorium reactors are said to be a meltdown safe option in this context. And again, China builds its first thorium reactor in the desert to supply remote areas with energy. But how is a meltdown safe nuclear fission possible in a hot dry desert? Click the displayed video if you want to learn more.